TV 18. The Reserve Bank's MPC is meeting in a backdrop where the global central bankers uh, are worried about the banking crisis in the US and we've already seen the Fed uh, introducing some moderation in its hawkishness. As always, CNBC TV 18 Citizens MPC meets ahead of the RBI's MPC to discuss the issues that confront uh, the uh, MPC. I have with me Chairman Pranop Sen and members of the Citizens MPC, Shamran Chakravarti of City, Sajid Chinoy of uh, uh, JPM, Soumya Kanti Kosh of State Bank of India, uh, so Sonal Varma of Nomura and uh, Dr. Pranop Sen, of course, the Chair. Uh, gentlemen and Sonal, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, Sonal, actually, let me start with you. Uh, the uh, global backdrop is what we have to discuss first and as we noted, uh, the Western uh, uh, banks have introduced some kind of moderation. Do you think that give, that will impact the MPC when it sits uh, in judgment of our situation? Uh, it should have an impact, Lata, because uh, when the February policy was uh, being uh, decided, I think the backdrop looked a lot more favorable uh, with, you know, talk of uh, soft landing, no landing, China reopening, triggering higher commodity prices. Uh, things have played out uh, differently. Uh, so on the uh, growth front, uh, with the current uh, banking sector uh, stress, there's still uncertainty on uh, how this actually plays out. Uh, the good scenario would be that the policy responses uh, done so far uh, curtail any further uh, increase in financial stress, which is our current baseline. Uh, but there is, of course, a risk that uh, as rates stay higher for longer and growth slows, uh, we see more uh, financial risks uh, evolve. But I think the important point is that in either of the scenarios, uh, it is likely that uh, banks are going to tighten their lending standards. Uh, small and regional banks uh, will see uh, their NIM, uh, you know, uh, come under squeeze uh, and their lending to uh, the smaller firms or commercial real estate. Uh, and I would say just broadly uh, lending standards, which were already being tightened uh, even before SVB happened, uh, will be tightened further. So the credit uh, channel is going to mean uh, lower bank lending uh, as well as lower growth. Uh, and our base case uh, is uh, very much still a recession uh, in US, uh, but also in uh, Europe. Uh, we're looking uh, for a mildish kind of a recession, but nevertheless, uh, it is uh, still very much a, a recession. So in terms of uh, the global growth assumptions that were made in February, uh, now it looks like global growth is going to be weaker than that. Uh, and therefore, for India's own growth outlook, it means there is downside risk. Uh, two, okay. I think despite China's reopening, uh, oil prices have not gone up uh, relative to the current assumptions of 95 uh, and therefore, I think given lower global growth uh, and contained commodity prices, which is our view going forward, uh, the uh, risk for inflation, despite the upside surprise in Jan, March, is also to the downside for FI24. Okay. Uh, and three, okay. the first two points actually do mean, uh, in our view, that uh, Fed is largely done with its uh, rate hiking cycle. Uh, so. Uh, as far as the external conditions from the current account and the external dynamics are concerned for India, that also looks a lot more uh, favorable today. Oh, okay. Well, Samir, uh, what, 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 what's the city view? I think you'll have a more benign view of uh, global growth. Uh, I mean, will global growth be so bad that uh, the Reserve Bank will have to take that into consideration and you know, be more dovish? So, Lata, first, uh, the situation is very uncertain. Uh, so uh, it is difficult to thumb the table and say exactly how this is going to play out. Uh, but if you just simply look at the global growth picture, the Jan-March quarter growth has been much higher than what anyone would have anticipated. And that's why despite us downgrading the latter part of the year forecast to some extent, the full year uh, global growth forecast around 2.2% that remains practically unchanged. Uh, the second part is that uh, because things are very uncertain, uh, I think the central bankers across the world are taking a view that 
we will pick up the pieces just in case something breaks, mm. uh, rather than taking a view that we will act before it breaks. Uh, so my sense is that going forward, monetary policy is going to be more reactive rather than proactive in a situation like this. Uh, and then we expect RBI to also follow the same pattern. Okay. Uh, so let's then concentrate on the uh, MPC's mandate, inflation. Uh, already the word core inflation has crept into their stance and that is not showing any uh, decline. February inflation was way higher than what the street or RBI estimated. So Shomyo, uh, will that be a very important factor uh, for the MPC, that inflation is not going as per their forecast? Yeah, thank you, Latana. I think uh, core inflation getting sticky, that story is unlikely to change. Uh, we need to understand but behind this why it is getting sticky and that's a, a fair point which the central bank has been making because core inflation is persistently sticky at around 6%. But we need to separate the noise from the data and the wheat from the shop, whatever you say. It. If you look into the period from January 2012 till February 2023, the decade, the core CPI average has been 5.84%. And I can see four to five distinct phases where the CPI is actually, if you remember in the early Jan 2012, the CPI was in higher tens, then it collapsed to 4%, then it again went up to 6%, then it again went up, uh, collapsed and again was at 6%, now it's 7%, now it's 6%. Now if I just take two periods out of this from January 2012 till February 2015, when the numbers went down from 10.3 to around 4%, yes. And from February 15 to June 2018, when the number went up from 4 to 6.5 percent whereabouts, there was a movement of around 600 basis points in core inflation, and the transport and communication part had contributed 20 percent to it. Instead, in, in fact, that is the story across all core inflation cycles: the transport and communication part contributing at least 15 to 20 percent of the increase or decline in the core inflation. So, how about now then? So, now, now the point is that this component is unlikely to go away because the the if I understand properly crude oil going up and going down is unlikely to make any meaning to the RBI inflation trajectory until and unless the government cuts the fuel prices. But that is not going to happen. If that doesn't happen, I think core inflation is unlikely to decline meaningfully to below 5.5% by the year end. So by that logic, if we buy that argument of core inflation becoming sticky, we may have to see several rate hikes, not oh. one in this policy. Okay, so that's not argument enough to keep the rates, keep on increasing yeah. rates is your point. Okay, now we'll come to the growth question. Uh, Sajid, the Reserve Bank's bulletin, March bulletin, seemed fairly confident on the growth story. Uh, if you're so confident of growth uh, and your inflation is coming higher than expected, you should hike rates. Are you as confident uh, and do you think the MPC will be as confident we didn't get that from the minutes of the external uh, members? Morning, Latha. Good to be here. Uh, I think I just want to first reinforce the global point that Shomaran made that uh, you know the first quarter of this year is tracking three and a half percent globally. Remember, this was the quarter when we were expecting a big recession. And in fact, global growth has accelerated over the last quarter. So there is a certain resilience to advanced economy, private sector balance sheets, which I think analysts have consistently underappreciated. Uh, um, and that has meant that at least advanced economy central banks will pursue two objectives and two instruments. That yes, if there are financial stability concerns, they will use regulatory tools to get after them. But because growth is holding up so well around the world and inflation has been so sticky, core inflation has been so sticky, uh, they still have to persevere with their rate hike, which is what the Fed did, the ECB did, the Bank of England did. In Asia, you've seen Thailand, Philippines, Taiwan. So this is have to be this will have to be horses for courses. Uh, you know, uh, I think um, some of the global strength in the first quarter is showing up in India. We had a strong exports number uh, uh, last month, both for goods and for services. But we have to expect that growth will slow at some point in time. The combination of policy normalization at home and the fact that at some point global growth is going to soften will not bypass India. The question is, will growth soften enough to bring inflation down decisively to the point where it becomes shockproof? What we've seen is a series of shocks the last three years, and each time inflation goes above 6%. The reason yes. I worry about core is that uh, repeatedly we have found 
that core is your best predictor for future headline. That it's headline yes. that converts to core, not the other way around. So I think the RBI won't be able to take comfort from the fact that because of favorable base effects, headline CPI is dipping to below 6% for the next few months. If core is going to be in the 55 to 6% range, yes, we have to worry about an anticipated slowdown. But the trade-off is there is a probabilistic future. We don't know how deep the slowdown is going to be. We don't know what the disinflationary impact of that's going to be. And you have to trade that off with the current, where we've seen currently sticky core inflation which is certain. So okay. there's a certain problem at the moment with an uncertain future. And therefore, I think the RBI may well have to focus on the here and the now. Okay, got that. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it, uh, I think there are slightly nuanced differences over here uh, with uh, 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 Sonal expecting things to be much softer and uh, Sajid and Samiran, I think, expecting that uh, both growth and inflation are not going to oblige and could be uh, a little higher. Uh, Dr. Sen, how are you looking at the scenario? Uh, is the Reserve Bank uh, to be more worried about uh, uh, inflation, which is their mandate? Well, there will be. I mean, you know, the fact of the matter is that on one hand, as everybody's agreed, the core is, is sticky. And the other is, I think we are at the moment looking at a very high probability of food prices going up. And uh, that's something that they're going to have to factor into account. I mean, despite the sort of soothing noises that the government has been making, the fact is agriculture, uh, particularly in the northern part of the country, isn't doing very well at all. Um, so we have to be uh, careful about the inflation story. As far as the growth story is concerned, uh, I think that the uncertainties are too large. But even taking into account those uncertainties, my sense is that the growth is going to soften uh, going forward. And I don't see it upticking uh, to anything really large uh, for, for a while yet. So I would at the moment worry a little bit more about inflation than I would worry about. Okay, I'm getting a sense that this MPC is going to vote more in favor of a hike. Uh, but just to add to that inflation part, uh, Shomiran, there are, uh, uh, what Dr. Sen is pointing out, already milk prices are rising every month, but uh, there are some weather-related fears as well. Absolutely. So it's not just milk. I mean, we have already got uh, some data on uh, something like two dal, etc., some pulse prices going up. Uh, Sugar prices globally has uh, shot through the roof. And now we are dealing with a February heat wave, a March unseasonal rain, and then we will be looking for whether it's an April, May El Nino situation or not. So the weather related uh, shocks and its impact on food prices would, some, would be something that will be there at the back of everyone's mind. Okay, so the chances of inflation remaining higher than uh, the Reserve Bank's uh, trajectory is a possibility. On that note, we have to take a break, but we have to understand how this MPC is going to vote on uh, the rate hike and what will be the stance of uh, both the official MPC and ours. All those questions after the break.